Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be starting a brand new series where I look through all my books about books and I've amassed quite a collection of these over the years and uh, I think they're fascinating to look at and there may be a few books here that you want to get hold of yourself. So without further ado, sit back, relax and let's take a look. Okay, so we'll start off with Paperbacks from Hell. And this one came out a few years ago now. And once again, although I don't really collect paperback horror fiction, which is what this predominantly sort of covers, including many video nasties, you could say, uh, in the paperback form, um, it's not to say that I don't like looking at what's available. And this is uh, a great book for that subject. So if I just sort of flick through, I've never done a dedicated review of this book, but... Um, I have uh, featured it a couple of times on the channel here. So let's just have a little look through and we'll see some of the goodies that are uh, on display within. And um, for me, if it's a book that shows lots of other book covers, then it's already a bit of a winner, in, in my opinion. And uh, some of these I remember at the time, some of them I actually read at the time. Um, I was a voracious reader when I was growing up. And uh, some of them, of course, have been reprinted. There is a separate imprint now, a paperback from Hell imprint. Quite tough to get them in Britain, um, but they are available online. You need to sort of do your searching. But you get this sort of idea. So if horror paperbacks is what you're craving, unfortunately on my channel, you're not going to find a lot of that. Because I just don't have a lot. There's some great stuff here. Here's the original uh, Vampire Tapestry. I was going to say that's Vampire Snap, but it's a Vampire Tapestry. Anyway, I think you get the idea. Let's just carry on flicking through these. There's the American editions of Horoscope. They're quite nice. So some of these I'm sure you recognise. Other ones I'm sure will be quite new. But this book is in print. You can still pick it up and as you can see it's beautifully produced I didn't think it was too expensive and like all the books we're going to see today um, whether they're in print or not I'll um, list to either pick them up yourself on eBay and Amazon so you'll be able to uh, just use those links below save you doing any searching and uh, it will go directly to that page so if you do see anything you fancy just check the description down below but there's some great great stuff here and uh as you can see, it's a good read as well. So many that I had no idea about, or I vaguely remember seeing. So yeah, that's the first one there, Paperbacks from Hell. So this next one is called Cover Me. It's by Colin Larkin, and this features uh, Colin's personal collection of original pan cover artwork from 1950 to 1965. Now this first edition here has actually gone out of print now, uh, but I believe it has been reprinted, and there's been a few um, amendments made to some of the uh, some of the, the information contained to get it even more accurate because it's such a huge subject. This, of course, but these are published by Telos Publications, and. Um, once again, I'll put links to uh, these, uh, this this book to buy online from Telos as well as uh, Amazon. And I think I have seen it on eBay as well. But Colin has got a fantastic collection of original pan art, the best in existence. Um, and it's all the really, really classic period as well, isn't it? It's just brilliant. And uh, as you can see, the book is beautifully presented. The artwork is in... Uh, fantastic the reproductions are fantastic and if you can find it in this hardback I don't know if the reprint is still in hardback I would hope so because it's such a great uh, great format to have this book it, it deserves a hardback but as you can see it's absolutely packed uh, the images I believe are in chronological order on the whole and uh, just classic stuff isn't it so if you're at all interested in pan books or just um, cover artwork in general you're going to need to pick up one of these because it's absolutely superb. A little bit of that very early days of paperbacks and pan as well. So yeah, great, great stuff this one. And uh, it's probably one of the, the top five books that's come out in the last last couple of years on vintage paperbacks and paperback art. And uh, yeah, really terrific that one. Now this next one is Tom Adams Uncovered. So 
it says the art of Agatha Christie and beyond. So he didn't just do Agatha Christie covers for Fontana. He did other books as well. Uh, this one's in a beautiful hardback. It's still in print. So you shouldn't have any uh, problem finding this one. Um, and uh, yeah, Tom Adams, he did. He's known for his sort of slightly gothic Agatha Christie book jackets, the ones that I always remember as a kid. But he did do a run of uh, Raymond Chandler in the States. And uh, he did works for John Fowles and other illustrators and publishers as well. But predominantly, I think he'll always be remembered for his fantastic Agatha Christie book jackets, which I absolutely love. And uh, this is a full study of all his work. Um, he did a beautiful cover for the James Bond hardback by Kingsley Amos, Colonel's Son, which is also one of my favourites. But you can see his style and uh, he proved to be very, very popular and the book sold by the bucket load for Fontana with his great jackets on. They're so recognisable. Beautiful, eh? Just gorgeous. This is some of his other stuff that he did. A great artist. So, not a book about books per se, but an awful lot of book jackets in here. Um, and that, for me, qualifies. <laughs> so there you go. The... Uh, Tom Adams Uncovered is a great, great book, and uh, if you got, if you like that style of artwork, you'll definitely not go far wrong with that one. Now this next one's called The Hooded Gunman, and it's an illustrated history of the Collins Crime Club by John Curran. That's a huge book, as you can see, and predominantly it is hardback focused rather than paperback. Um, however, the paperbacks do get a little bit of a mention here. Now this one full price was £40. Now you may well be able to get this a little bit cheaper than that. But when you have a little look through, you'll see that this is uh, encyclopedic. So it's got all the books there, first of all, with a synopsis of what the stories are actually about. So that's, that takes up the tail end of the book. And then you've got the visual guide, which goes through uh, sort of decade by decade. There's the very rare crime club card game you don't see those i've never ever seen them for sale super rare these are the later ones anniversary editions there's some of the paperbacks the collins white circle paperbacks which were often reprints of these and this is the bits that we like <laughs> and this is up to the early 90s when the series finally came to an end but pretty much all of the books are featured. What a collection this chat must have. I mean, really, really superb. And as I said, they're all detailed at the back. So if there's one that you fancy, you can look it up. And it says it is an encyclopedia. And there is no other work like this. And what a study of one publisher this really is. It's, the book is about 400 pages in total. And it deserved the hardback printing. And just terrific, isn't it? As I said, predominantly the hardback firsts rather than paperbacks. But some paperbacks do get featured. And as we get further back, this is into the 60s now. And it's beautiful to see the change in uh, cover design. That I very much am a student of. A bit like, you know, seeing a movie posters change in design by decade. Exactly the same with books and records as well. See so the fifties now. Awesome, aren't they? And the earlier you get, the more sort of extravagant they seem to become. And uh, these ones here, you know, these forties sort of and anything pre-war and dust wrapper, you're talking a lot of money now. So just to be able to see these is almost like a privilege because these are very rare books in their own right. Some, of course, have been facsimile nowadays for the modern audience because they are so rare. So that was post-war. This is pre-war now. Tail end of the 1930s. Great period for classic crime. Having a bit, a bit of a revival now. British Library in the UK are reprinting a lot of these 
1930s and 40s paperbacks that have slipped into obscurity. And these other ones had quite sort of topographical covers there with the three gunmen on, which um, I'm obviously not such a fan of. I like the illustrated jackets, but um, not every book was treated to the, uh, the illustrated jacket. Some just had generic ones. There we are, these are the very, very earliest. So, what a gorgeous book, eh? Very, very nice indeed. And, uh, you know, if you know someone who likes just classic crime in general, I think they'll really enjoy that particular one. Um, it's not, um, yeah, this is £40, so it's not cheap. But look at what you get. I mean, it's incredible, isn't it? So, well, well worth it. Now, I've never shown this one on the channel before. So this one and the next one, in fact, focus on a particular artist who ended up as well as doing book jackets, they also did a lot of uh, movie posters and things like that. This is Robert McGuinness, and I always, you can always tell a Robert McGuinness, if it's not signed, this one obviously is, is because his women tend to have impossibly long legs. That's his, in my opinion, that's his trademark. Now, this one wasn't published in the UK, um, so this is an import copy, um, one that I got, you know, I got it through Amazon UK again, but it was um, as an import, so I don't remember exactly how much it was. But you'll recognise quite a bit of this artist's work when you when we start flicking through. And uh, he certainly did very, very distinctive. And he certainly did an awful lot of um, book cover art and, and movie posters as well. But it was his book jackets that I think, and he, he did hundreds. And um, there are people, there are paperback collectors who just collect Robert McGuinness jackets. So we'll zoom through to that because obviously this is a lot of his magazine work at the moment now we go. starting to get some of the the movie posters um in the mix here bit of a squeaky book here as i'm flicking my way through <laughs> live and let die that was his um sort of bond tribute one the tribute to bond and it's just terrific that poster there is just amazing absolutely amazing some of his bits for Thunderball here. Another classic Bond poster. Here we are, and some of his works being reused on Hard Case Crime, the classic reprint publisher. So uh, I've got quite a few of those which um, have featured his artwork. But as I said, his artwork in general um, is collected in its own right. And there's an awful lot of his paperback covers here. So. Um, I don't know if a definitive list, list has ever been put together of all his paperback work because there's just so many of them. But I'm sure it's out there somewhere if you do some searching online. You'll see an awful lot of these um, classic ones like the Milo March series. I believe he did the whole lot. He did the cover for every single one. And so the, the series got a really uniform look. They're just amazing, aren't they? A very, very talented, uh, talented artist. There's an Ed Book name there. A classic Jim Thompson. That's a rather collectible paperback. It's £100, if ever you see that in that edition. They're just magic, aren't they? Another very collectible one there by Harry Whittington. So good stuff. So although it just focuses on the one, um, the one artist, you know, what an artist in effect, you know. I'm trying to see when this one's published. It wasn't that long ago. Uh, two, well, 2014, so nine years, but I'm sure you can still pick this one up. And as I said, I'll, uh, I'll do some links down below. Now, this is another book that I've never shown on the channel. Um, I picked this up as a remainder, believe it or not, um, in the UK chain, The Works. Um, I don't believe they've got any left now, but this was The Man with Kaleidoscope Eyes. It's the art of Alan Aldridge, the British artist. And he did a lot of work for um, uh, Penguin. And he's also uh, quite a supporter of the Beatles. I think he knew the Beatles personally. And uh, we'll have a flick through. Um, as I said, his paperback, he did a lot of stuff other than paperback work. So um, his paperback work is predominantly at the uh, start. But you get a, a little idea of the sort of 
output that he was uh, known for. Um, obviously, I've got a big interest because he did he started work for Penguin as one of their designers. Um, so I've been trying to pick down all, uh, pick up all of his Penguin covers. I haven't got them all quite yet, but I've almost got them all. And when I've trapped the whole, I've got a list of everyone that he did. And uh, once I've got got the whole lot licked, I shall. Um, I shall do a dedicated video on the Alan Aldridge penguin covers, but I think they're pretty much all shown, or most of them are shown, uh, towards the start of this book, because it was how he got his main break, really, you know? I said he did quite a bit of stuff for the Beatles. Beatles Illustrated Lyrics, one of his famous books. That great cover for The Observer, that's quite expensive, the uh, Paul McCartney interview. Now, that was his book, The Penguin, John Lennon. And what you don't often see are these uh, uh, but sort of behind-the-scenes pictures. But that was the one that was finally used. And on the back, that one there with uh, Lennon with the different pairs of glasses on. There was the book that he actually compiled and wrote, The Penguin Illustrated Guide to Comics, which I have got a copy of. It's a large format book, part of the Penguin main series. Here's some of his Penguin SF titles. And aren't they, aren't they great? The very, very distinctive style, as you can see. All quite collectible, these nowadays, as you might expect. And this is some of his take on just ordinary Penguin fiction. Um, I've got like that one, for example. You'd never believe that that was an Alan Aldridge cover. But some of these other ones here are really quite something. So, uh, as I said, he was part of the, uh, the Penguin Art Department. That's another one I've got. So I, I do have most of these in my collection, but there's just a handful that I've not got, which I'm still trying to track down. But once I've got them all, and there's quite a list, there's some of his crime ones at the top there, um, I will pull them all together and I'll do a dedicated video. But as I said, I've never shown this book before, and it's it's really, really great. So uh, definitely recommended. And as I said, I picked mine up as a remaindered copy, so you may be able to find one fairly cheap on somewhere like eBay. So I'll do the research for you, put the links in down below, and you can uh, see if you can get one cheap, because as I said, it's a really nice, colourful book. I see that one actually was the US printing of that one, even though I bought it in the UK. It's a cool, cool book, that. Okay, so the last one we're looking at today, I have actually done a dedicated review of, and it came out a couple of years ago now. It's The Art of Pulp Fiction by Ed Hulse. Um, introduction by Richard Lupoff. And it's this is a really, really great look at um, vintage paperbacks as a whole, as the genre as a whole. And you see, it's a huge old tome again. Um, and as I said, for a detailed look through literally every page, um, I'll pop a link to the dedicated review uh, in the description but this is absolutely packed with uh, beautiful paperback reproductions as you can see all the classics are here there's chapters on different genres different things that people collect different publishers as well um, a lot of the main players in the world of paperbacks have done contributing articles for it it's uh, it's really terrific it is as you can see, predominantly American paperbacks, USA ones, rather than anywhere else. But boy, oh boy, what a great book this one is. Absolute top reproduction of the covers. It really is fantastic. And I think, you know, once again, if you've got any sort of interest in paperbacks, this one definitely needs to be on your shelf because it's just so good. Brilliant, eh? And I think, you know, looking through these books, you can sort of see why I like collecting them. Because you can never have enough books. And if you've had a dry period where you've not been able to find any books, having a little look through these uh, can sort of uh, cheer you up a little bit. Because <laughs> you're seeing stuff that you've never seen before. And it might sort of point you in a different direction with your collecting adventures. Certainly, these sorts of books are, uh, I just love them, absolutely love them. So that really is just part one 
of a look through my books about books. I've got a lot more to show you. As I said, I reckon four, maybe five even videos looking at books on books. So uh, I'll try and do at least one a month going forward. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that first video looking at my books about books. Certainly some beautiful books to see there. If you have enjoyed today's video, do please give it that thumbs up. Do please hit the subscribe button if you're not already for regular vintage paperback content. And I'll look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.